Hello you multi, masterful multimedia moments. That was a malt mention and thank you to Mr. Positronia for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy with Ralphie Review 968 and uh, I'm reviewing a Scotch, Scotch single malt whisky. And the reason I'm reviewing this whisky, which is called Glen Scotia Victoriana, um, is simply that it, it won the accolade at the Online Scotch Whisky Awards 2022 as being the best Scotch whisky of the year. Now, that is no easy task. So I'm going to be reviewing this whisky and I have re I have actually mentioned it before, about a year ago, because I was very impressed with the inaugural version when it came out. And I'm going to be touching on that again later in the video. But um, here we go. I've, I've completed my malt mention. Are you sitting comfortably? Have you poured yourself a wee dram? Because if you have, it makes the malt moment here in the malt bothy that little bit maltier. I've been enjoying this whisky, not quite as much as the first edition, because the first edition was the Ambassador edition. However, it still remains, despite all the batches of Victoriana, which have appeared in the shops, to be a very good value, satisfying and rewarding sipping single malt Scotch whisky. It won the accolade of Online Scotch Whiskey Awards and you'll, you'll find a link below in the description box to the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards um, in 2022 of the best whisky of the year for some with some very tough competition. And just to kind of give you a perspective in case you're not aware of the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, it is... Um, an enthusiast-led, completely industry-independent awards scheme set up by onliners, supported by onliners, and engaging and connecting with whisky enthusiasts who vote in a democratic process for a number of awards over a number of categories. So just go and check out the website because it's quite self-explanatory and particularly if you're new to Scotch whisky, you will find it a very valuable resource because what you're getting there is feedback directly from the online community and whisky buyers and not by a marketing-led initiative, which some other whisky award schemes most certainly are. Now, I want to, just while this is breathing, you know, just opening up in the glass, I'm going to introduce the other whiskies, which made the nominations list of six, right? So six nominations within the category. And the first one was Anok 18 year old, which is an excellent, good value, integrity presented, Speyside whiskey, which I highly recommend. Ardnamurkin cask strength, very young distillery, West Coast distillery, very different from a knock, so a whole different flavour profile, different character, big, beefy, super malty, not as delicate as the Anok, and um, full cask strength. And I have to advise you, if you're interested in Ardnamurkin, increasingly you're going to have to be quick on your feet because it's becoming immensely popular just so as you know. Also, we have Bunahabin 12-year-old, widely available, representing very good value as a 12-year-old, again, bottled with integrity at higher strength. And um, then we have Kilkerran 16-year-old from Glengyle Distillery, the sister distillery of Springbank, which, again, is becoming harder to find. Why? Because it's really good quality and it's from a relatively small distillery. 
and then finally Lechek, 18 year old from the Isle of Mull from Tobermory Distillery, heavily peated, 18 years old, again integrity bottling, you see that? Integrity, 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 You'll, you hear that a lot in this category. And um, it's a superb whisky. The Lechek, 18 year old, is a beautifully rich, dense, rounded, complex and immensely rewarding, heavily peated whisky. Um, and it's, it's won a lot of recognition from true experienced whisky fans. So I want to present something to you here. All six nominations, including the Victoriana. If you were to go out and buy all of them, all six, not just the winner, you would have, particularly if you're just a few years into your whisky journey and you're on a budget, you would have an amazingly diverse, top quality range of six bottles of whisky. You've got the heavily peated Lechek, you've got the unpeated Anok. There's age statements in there, 18 year old, 12 year old, 16 year old, 18 year old, at good value. In fact, you could buy in the UK all six bottles for just over £400. Now I put it to you, for the investment that's gone in by the, by the producers, the calibre of the signature of these whiskies, the time, care and professional professionalism and the investment required to actually create these whiskies, I would suggest as luxury products, and they are luxury products, that all six together for the budget represents very, very good value. And that's it's just my opinion, which is, I mean, I buy them. So <laughs> I've, I'm invested. Um, also, you look at the bottling strength. There is not one single whiskey in here which is bottled at 40%. Not one single whiskey which has had to be chill filtered to make it clear at that relatively weak strength. The higher the alcoholic strength of the whiskey, the more the delivery through the volume of alcohol, the delivery of the experience of smell and taste. And sure, you're going to add water. We all add water. I certainly add plenty of water. But you could say, hey, Ralphie, well, they've watered it down for you. Yeah, you're not joking, they have. And see when they did, the magic went, went, disappeared when they watered it down. The intensity diminished. When we water it down, we water it at a point of consumption. That's when we add water. And it takes hours for it to diminish. Meanwhile, we're consuming it enjoying it, connecting with it. If you buy all six of these bottles of whiskey, just if that was your entire spend for a whole year, you would be getting amazing quality at an amazing price. And this is one thing that really keeps me engaged and connected with Scotch whiskey, is the relative good value for those and only those who are prepared to actually do the research and go on the exploration. Now, the fact that you're watching this video, it's a good sign. You're well on your road to that journey. So, I briefly mentioned that when this Victoriana first came out, the first batch, I bought a bottle and I really, really enjoyed it. As soon as I put my nose to it, I thought there's some serious quality old whiskey in here. But it's got a non-age statement, you see. That's the thing. But when you get past that, and I'd, I'd love to see the age statements, but one reason that they don't have an age statement is because the age statement would have to relate to the youngest whiskey in the bottle. And the Scotch Whiskey Association, for their own reasons, and I don't believe they are legitimate reasons because it's it's not actually depend, defending, it's, it's not a decision that defends the reputation of Scotch whisky. Lack of disclosure. But if the back of the label could just say this is a, a selection of single malts from six years old to 25 year old, off, for example, off the top of my head. 
or this is a range of single malts from 8 years old to 18 years old. And this is the percentage in proportion. There is absolutely no reason why you cannot have this disclosure in absence of a fixed age statement because you're getting an age statement range. It should be allowed, it should be a permissible and the Scotch Whiskey Association should not be kicking off and taking to task any producers who want to pass on this information to their customers because when the producers pass on that information it's showing respect, it's showing connectivity, it's showing an engagement and that is good for the reputation of Scotch whisky. Period. Nose. Very malty, rich toffee. Some deep dried fruits including plums, sort of, sort of dark plums that you get in Japanese plum wine. A little bit of hint of ginger in the background, some soft caramel notes, and slight fudgy notes as well. See the thing about Glen Scotia is as a distiller it's been off people's radars for far too long. Up until recently under its previous ownership it was basically invisible and rarely, very rarely, you'd see a bottle of Glen Scotia appear from the likes of Caden Heads or Gordon and MacPhail. Independent bottlers. And this was your only point of reference and I have to say the distillery was badly neglected by previous owners who simply, in my opinion, were not running their business competently because if they had, they'd have put this magnificent single malt signature out there and we'd have known about it a lot, lot sooner. Well, we know about it now. There's lots more Glen Scotia bottlings becoming available now and I recommend you look out for them as and when they appear, particular, particularly for whisky festivals. Handy hint there. Taste. This is a cast strength whisky. Initial, malty and bitter, wood bitter and malt sour. Some people are going to be put off by that because first impressions aren't that great. This is where adding a drop of water and cutting the strength of the whisky is so important. And I'm adding th three millilitres of water and I may add some more later but that'll do for the moment. When you cut this whiskey with water, you really want to leave it one minute in the glass for each year in the cask. Worth noting that there's a variety of age ranges of whiskey, of single malt whiskey in this bottling. It isn't the youngest age statement which is your one minute in the glass for each year in the cask. It's got to be the oldest. So I would recommend you leave this in the glass once you've added water for a good 20 minutes and then you're going to get a much more solid delivery of the complexity and toned down sensations which when you first pour the glass are a little bit two dimensional. Back to my back to the nose. So I'm going to move things on about 15 minutes. More complex, more sophisticated. The actual malt flavour of it, and there's a tint of peat in the background here, but it's just a kind of deep complex malt, rather like you would find in Ben Nevis for example, on a good day, and certainly you'll notice in, in Ardna Merkins, there's some real heavy flavour complexity going on that initially is quite confusing to the palate, but once it's settled down, once you've spent time with this whisky, and importantly, once you've had a wee dram, walked away for it and come back in a few weeks' time, it will start to grow on you. It will start to develop as it oxidises in the bottle. By the time you get near the bottom of that bottle, you will be enjoying it a lot, lot more than when you started. This is a complex signature of a whiskey. Oh yeah. 
very juicy. Definitely some light chimney smoke peatiness in the background. Some old cask notes. Dunnage, absolutely. That kind of umami note. Um, it's one where you want to take a... To get access into it, you actually take half the sip you usually do and you just leave it sitting in the tongue for as long as you can. And don't go on a flavour chase. Let the flavours in the whisky come to you. So why did this whisky win Best Whisky of the Year 2022 from a whole cross-section of online whisky fans? What's the fundamental reason? I'll give you the answer. Character and value. Glen Scotia is one of Scotch whisky's hidden gem signatures of a single malt. It's up there with the way Macallan used to be. It's up there with Springbank. It's up there with Mortlach. It's up there with Lagavulin. It's up there with Bowmore as it used to be. Um, it is just a fantastically rounded, three-dimensional complex flavour range which comes purely by default of the location, provenance and shape of the stills and the way they make whisky at that distillery and they make very good whisky at, that, at this distillery. And this is being acknowledged in one of the most flattering bottlings in recent years that has acted as almost a, 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 an ambassador of awareness for a new generation of whisky fans who are getting deaf to the white noise and buzz of marketing and who are just waiting for other whisky fans to say, Hoi, I found a great whisky and I want to share it with you. And this has really benefited. In fact, Glen Scotia is really benefiting from the ambassador role that this bottling has brought to their range. As I mentioned, that the first bottling was the absolute stunner. And people who have then bought a second, third bottling or a later batch after the first batch, having had such a stellar experience of saying, mm, it's quite good, but it's not as good as. But you'll find this ambassador cask um, bottling, um, ambassador batch bottling, the first um, introductory bottling of a whiskey. It, it's, it's part of the character and habit of the Scotch whisky industry to do this because it's by far the most effective, particularly now, and most cost-effective form of marketing by any distillery is actually the quality of liquor that they put in the bottle. The trick is, the skill is, with, so, with increasing competition, is to actually, once you've had this first ambassador batch, the second bottling should be ambassador the third bottling should be ambassador. The fourth, fifth, sixth batch in bottlings, they should be ambassadors too. One of the big mistakes is when distilleries rest on their laurels, feeling they've got the volume of consumers and customers that they require, is they'll start to let standards slip and just put in filler casks to make up a batch for a bottling. And it's just not what it should be. It's not what people expect. And see that disappointment? People will talk about it and message it online like never before in history and you will get negative advertising. You will get disadvertising. There you are. There's a new word for you. Disadvertising. Dismarketing. It's a very real thing, distillers, and you need to know about it. We've not got to that extent yet with Glen Scotia and I hope we never do. My one reserve with this distillery is the way they palletise their casks for maturation. I do not like palletised casks because, in my opinion, it inhibits the quality of maturation of a cask over time. But it is convenient for forklift trucks. So you can work with fewer people in your warehouse. Distillers, it's a false economy. Just sharing. Complex, sensation intense, prominent bitter, prominent sour. It's an old school complex yesteryear type of whiskey. Um, 
It's an acquired taste. I wouldn't recommend this to beginners. I do recommend this to experienced whiskey fans who are on a budget particularly. This is your birthday present. This is someone else's birthday present to you or the birthday present you buy for yourself. It's that sort of whiskey. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will now conclude with some final tastings and a malt mark. Malty, sensation rich arrival. Toffee, it's like cocoa notes. Plum notes, dark cherry, soft spices. Gets dry, slight oakiness in the development and to the finish. Tannins, loads of tannins in the finish. Crispy, over brewed, fresh English breakfast tea. Those sort of tannins. If anything, this batch is just a little too tanny in the development and the finish and it's stifling the natural complexity of the finish that could and should be there. But this is a, a later version. Um, let me see. I'm just looking for a, a batch code. L427122. Okay. This was bottled in the ninth month, October. September, right. Bottled September in 2022, so you can see this is one of the most recent batches available. Um, it's a little bit top heavy with tannins, but it's still a good and competent whiskey. And it says in the front, natural colour, non-chill filtered. Natural colour, non-chill filtered. You will see more of this on whiskies that want to pre present the quality of what they are. As we see further separation between the big, big producers who may prefer, not always, but may prefer the option of catering for, because of volume reasons, catering for the more passive consumer who will accept less. Um, and the growing market and the growing awareness within the Scotch whisky industry, that there is a global awareness of the what Scotch whisky is capable of being, and it's only only found when it's delivered at higher strength, natural colour, unchill filtered. And nobody, but nobody can quibble and question my opinion. It's because it's a consensus, not just an opinion, it's a consensus amongst experienced whisky drinkers and also many experienced qualified professionals within the whisky industry itself. If you're bottling if, you, if you're buying any bottle at 40%, you will be buying a lesser whiskey each and every time, irrespective of the quality. And then you need to understand that. As demonstrated in the shortlist for the best whiskey of the year at the Oswiz. I mean, it's not just me. Malt Mark. Integrity Malt Mark. I'm going to give this 84 out of 100. The first bottling, the ambassador bottling from the first batch, when I bought that, I gave it a higher score. Now I would give it probably 87, right, with my new calib recalibration. But 84 is a good mark for a malt. 84 out of 100. Ralphie recommended if you buy this, you're highly likely to be glad you did. Now, if you pop back to my next review, which is going to be 968 extras, I will be talking about what to look out for in a better bottling. What are the signs of a better quality of whiskey? And this ties in, and I'll be it'll be based on the short list that was for the best whiskey of the year for, for the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards in 2022. Hi, right. where's this Clivey Clicker? We've reached the end of this video. It's lovely to see you. Subscribe if you haven't, and enjoy your malt moment if you're having one. <laughs>